if you have astigmatism and you're headed into cataract surgery anytime soon, and you're finding yourself overwhelmed with all of the different options that are out there for intraocular lens implants to correct astigmatism, or you don't know if you want to correct your astigmatism, this video is for you. I'm going to try to clear up some of those things today, going over the various options that are out there, some of the pros and, and cons, and what you can expect of your vision if you choose one method versus another, and whether you need to expect to wear glasses or contacts afterwards or not. So first we need to tackle what is astigmatism and how do you know if you have it? Well, if you have your glasses prescription and you look at the columns that say cylinder and axis, if there are numbers there, that means you have astigmatism. Now in the cylinder column, if there's less than a 0.75 there, it's really not very much astigmatism and you actually might not need to correct that amount of astigmatism using any of these methods during cataract surgery. There's a lot of nuance when it comes to medicine and surgery and that is where in-depth conversations with your personal care provider about your needs and expectations will be the most beneficial but i'm hoping to give you an overview so you can have a good understanding of what you may be facing in the near future so if you see in the axis column, a really large number that has nothing to do with the amount of astigmatism. That's just describing the location of the correction of the astigmatism. It's the number in the cylinder column that describes the amount. So astigmatism really can happen because of a couple of reasons. Sometimes it's because of the shape of the cornea, the front surface of the eye, and sometimes it's because of the shape of the lens in the eye. And usually it's the cornea, and I'm going to be focusing on that today because if you have astigmatism within the lens of the eye, well, that's going to be removed during cataract surgery anyway, so then it doesn't need to be corrected and it's kind of a moot point. Uh, but regardless, uh, let's talk about astigmatism in the cornea. So if this racquetball were your cornea here, this would be an eye without astigmatism. If this were to be extended all the way around, it would be a nice sphere. This is an eye without astigmatism. Now, an eye with astigmatism has a little bit of a bend to it, more or less, and so it's steeper in one direction compared to the other. If you were to extend that back, it would create not a sphere, some sort of weird oblong shape. It would not look like a regular racquetball, and that's what astigmatism is. So it needs to be corrected in order to give clear vision. It's different from being nearsighted and farsighted because this cornea is what you're looking through all of the time, no matter what distance you're focusing at. So astigmatism needs to be corrected for all distances, and that will affect some of our options that I'm going to be covering here today. So the first option, and probably the simplest and easiest to understand, is the toric intraocular lens implant. When you hear the word toric, that refers to something that corrects for astigmatism. So a toric intraocular lens implant will be inserted into the eye after that cataract is removed, and it's kind of like having a permanent glasses prescription in your eye. The goal is going to be that that prescription compensates for what your eye needs in order to give you clear vision. This lens will most likely be used to correct your distance vision and you will be needing to wear reading glasses after the surgery if this is the lens that you choose. There is an option that I'm going to be discussing a little later on where you get one eye for distance and one eye for near. The toric lens can be used for that if you want to be less dependent on glasses for near work but I will go into a little bit more detail about that. So a toric multifocal intraocular lens implant is the toric intraocular lens, but it also has the ability to correct for near and far kind of simultaneously. It depends on where you're looking, the pupil size, what you're focusing on, and the lens will actually give you clear vision at multiple different distances. Now, this is a really special type of technology that's kind of on the newer side. And at first, people had more complaints about glare and halos, especially some trouble with night driving. 
but the technology has improved over time that this isn't as much of an issue, but it's definitely something to consider when thinking about getting this lens implant. Now, this is not like having one eye for distance and one eye for near. Both eyes are corrected for both near and far, and both eyes will be corrected for astigmatism, assuming you have astigmatism in both eyes. And I'm just going to assume that for the video just to simplify things. So another option, if you decide not to go the route of correcting astigmatism with the lens implant itself, would be with incisions that are made during the cataract surgery. And there are a few different options. Astigmatic keratotomy, AK, or limbal relaxing incisions, LRIs, are two ways that incisions can be used to correct for astigmatism. So in both of these, a incision is made during the cataract procedure on the steeper part of the cornea in order to bring that down and be more even with the flatter part of the cornea. The limbal relaxing incisions are done more towards the edge of the cornea, which is called the limbus, and that's where it gets its name. And the astigmatic keratotomy is done a little bit more centrally. The limbal relaxing incisions tend to be a little bit more precise and controllable with the end result compared to the astigmatic keratotomies, but both are not quite as precise as using a toric intraocular lens implant because with that one, you know exactly what you're putting in the eye and the incisions aren't quite that precise, but they are still a viable option to correct mild to moderate amounts of astigmatism. When it comes to the toric intraocular lens implants, that can certainly correct larger amounts of astigmatism. However, there is a limit to what lenses are available for implantation. So sometimes they can actually be used in combination, the toric intraocular lens implants and AK or LRI in order to correct astigmatism. There is another way to correct corneal astigmatism with incisions during cataract surgery, and that is with clear corneal incisions. These are interesting because they're already a part of the cataract surgery. In order to have the cataract surgery done, incisions need to be made to insert the instruments and break up the cataract and remove the cataract and replace it with a lens. But sometimes these incisions can be strategically placed to be in the steeper part of the cornea and sometimes made just a little bit wider than they normally would be in order to correct a certain amount of astigmatism. So these would be the least expensive option because they're not an additional procedure. They're already a part of the procedure. They already have to be done. They're just going to be done a little bit differently in order to achieve a desired result. So that is certainly an option. Do you need to be the one to decide all of these things, whether you're doing LRIs or CCIs or AKs or toric intraocular lenses? No, that's so much to think about. What you need to know is what your goals for vision are afterwards. There may be some financial considerations and those you can discuss further with your eye care provider. Also, it's going to depend on how much astigmatism there is and they should be able to break it down based on your individual case. You may have been given the option of laser assisted cataract surgery in which the laser performs certain aspects of the surgery, which would be making the incisions and breaking up the cataract into smaller pieces in order to be removed. But the laser assisted cataract surgery can also be used to make those LRIs or AKs so that it's not having to be done manually with a blade. Both are also viable options. For me, I kind of have a hierarchy of what I trust to be most precise. And that would be first a machine, then a human, then a human running the machine. And in this case, with this laser assisted procedure, it's a human running a machine to make the laser, make the incisions, and it's a little bit more precise and repeatable when it comes to correcting astigmatism. There are also other options out there. You might've heard of monovision, where you have one eye corrected for distance and one for near, but keep in mind, you still need to correct astigmatism in order for that to work. So there is the standard lens where it doesn't correct for astigmatism, it just has one focal point. So if you were to use the standard lens for monovision, you would have a standard lens for distance in one eye, a standard lens for near in the other, and you'd have to correct the astigmatism 
with an LRI or an AK, this is not so commonly done. So another way to do it would be to have a toric intraocular lens that's set for distance in one eye and a toric intraocular lens that's for near in the other. We can't end without talking today about the light adjustable lens, which is one of the newer lenses that's out there. This particular lens implant is very unique because the lens is implanted and it's after the cataract surgery where the prescription is dialed into the lens using a series of UV light treatments. This is really cool technology that can correct for the astigmatism and for distance and near and can be more precise with the goal of making people less dependent on their glasses. And I have a whole video about that, so you can check out that next. I'll link it at the end of this video and in the description. Uh, but that is you know, a really great option that we have now that we didn't just a few years ago. Another option that you may have been given that doesn't actually correct astigmatism, but can help ensure that you get the prescription that you need and want with your cataract surgery is intraoperative aberometry. And basically what that means is during the cataract procedure, after the cataract is removed, an instrument can be used to verify what power you need to fully correct the astigmatism and give you the visual result that you want. And this can be helpful because prior to cataract surgery, when all of these measurements are being taken to determine what lens implant should be used, there is a cataract in the eye. And sometimes that can affect the quality of the measurements. So this is just another way to double check that you will be happy after the cataract surgery. Let's say you have astigmatism and you decide to go with with the standard intraocular lens implant that's included with insurance plans, no additional procedures or advanced technology lenses, no monovision, what can you expect? Well, if you get the standard, it's not going to correct astigmatism and it's not going to correct multiple distances at once. You can expect that your doctor will probably try to maximize your vision for distance. You'll need to get a glasses prescription or contact lens prescription after the cataract surgery and that prescription will be different from what it was prior to cataract surgery. It will most likely be a bifocal or trifocal or progressive lens, or if you're used to wearing one pair of glasses for distance and one for near and one for mid-range like computer or reading music, uh, whatever you were doing prior to cataract surgery, you'll probably be doing something similar. Unless you have a very small level of astigmatism and then you're corrected for distance and you might not really need to wear glasses much for distance or maybe just for driving or certain activities. And based on your precise prescription, your doctor will probably be able to give you a feel for what you can expect. This is assuming you have a good surgical outcome without complications or any other underlying ocular diagnoses. We were just talking, if you get the basic standard lens, you can still expect to get a similar prescription to what you had prior to surgery, most likely correcting for distance mid-range and near. If you get the toric intraocular lens implant for distance, you can expect to wear reading glasses as needed, but keep in mind that if you're somebody who doesn't like to take glasses on and off, or if you think you're gonna be bothered by that, you might still end up wearing progressive lenses or bifocal lenses. Um, all things to think about when you're making this decision. If you get the multifocal toric intraocular lens implant, this will ideally correct your vision at all distances. But keep in mind, there are most likely going to be situations that will require a pair of reading glasses. Some examples of this could be reading a menu in a dimly lit restaurant or doing very detailed work like beading, for example. If you go for monovision, whether you're doing that with standard lenses and LRIs, which again is really unusual, or you're doing that with toric lenses, just let's say, you know, you have one eye for distance and one eye for near. Uh, there are a couple of ways to go about it. Some people may have one eye for distance and one eye for more of a mid range because maybe they like to be able to read their music or they do a lot of computer work and then they'll need a pair of reading glasses to see very up close. That is certainly an option. And there may be others who will have one eye for distance, one eye for near, and they'll still need reading glasses just for similar situations as the multifocal intraocular lenses, just doing really detailed work or situations where the eye may be straining like in dim lighting. For the light adjustable lens, they do boast a high success rate at people being quite independent of their glasses. So with this correcting for astigmatism and near and far, uh, the likelihood of needing glasses after that is fairly low, but 
Uh, again, it may be just for those really small detailed situations where you might need a pair of reading glasses. When deciding whether you're going to go the route of getting your astigmatism corrected with an intraocular lens implant or with an additional procedure or a combination of the two versus not getting that corrected, sometimes finances are part of that decision. It's also something worth thinking about that if you don't have good vision insurance to pay for the glasses, that it may be worth correcting during cataract surgery in order to save with prescription glasses over time. And that's definitely a consideration to make. Um, also, of course, you and your doctor will discuss what your particular needs are, what your desires are for your vision, and if you have any underlying uh, ocular conditions going on, because there are many that may preclude you from being able to get one of these advanced technology lenses, or they may not recommend correcting for the astigmatism with the procedure because the doctor may know that you'll require glasses wear full time, distance, near, everything, um, because of these other conditions that you have. So all of these things are very important to consider when going into this decision. I wish you the very best. Thank you so much for watching. If you want some more information about intraocular lens implants where I go into a little bit more detail, give some more examples or scenarios, uh, you could watch this video right here. And to learn more about that light adjustable lens I was talking about, this is the video for you. Thanks again, and I hope to see you next time.